Okay, hello there. Welcome back to my Audio Finder tutorial series. A viewer called Dan recently asked me if I could do a more sound effects focused video. So if you're using Audio Finder for sound design, then ignore all my other videos because this is the one you want to watch. I'm splitting this up into two parts because I think you kind of have two different workflows in Audio Finder when it comes to integrating this program into your workflow. Okay, so for part one of this tutorial, we're just going to focus on using Audio Finder as a better version of Mac Finder, a better way to organize your files and a better way to demo them. And I think this is probably the most applicable and the easiest way to get into using this program right in the beginning. If you don't want to have to spend a long time tagging up your files and doing all the metadata stuff, Audio Finder's actually got some really, really powerful features to just help you speed up looking around samples and finding the ones you want. Probably the most useful feature that I use all the time in Audio Finder is this Spotlight Search, which works very similarly to the Spotlight Search on your computer, your native one. But if I type in Kick in here, it's given me this list, but it's not you know, it's just giving me a few folders, a few files. I'm sure you can, yeah, you can go show all there. So you can get to the same place, but you can see it's kind of laggy when I'm dragging through this list. So what you can do, if I do the same thing in Audio Finder, A, it just feels like it does it a little bit quicker. It gets you into this list. And secondly, as I'm demoing through this list, I can use the star button on my Mac to randomly shuffle through it rather than always having to go for top down options. So you'll end up finding lots of sounds you never thought you'd use. What you can also do is go forwards and backwards in your playback history. So if you've skipped through a sample with this random shuffle button and you've heard something you like, you can go back to it with command left bracket or forwards with command right bracket. The samples you've shuffled through or looked through will also show up in your playback history. So you kind of get a few extra options than you would using normal Mac Finder, which, which are really helpful when you're shuffling through sounds and trying to find the ones you want. Another feature which is really handy for you is the sidebar lists. Now, these act as playlists, you can create playlists in Audio Finder and what you do to create a list is go on the left, new sidebar group to create a group. So I've done a few tutorials I've, I've still got in here, but if I go SFX tutorial and then to add lists, you right click on the group or on another list and create new empty list. Then you've got to name it up here and drag it in all the way down. That's how you get the playlist, the native playlist in Audio Finder into these sidebar groups. But what you can also do is you can drag folders in straight off your Mac. So if you've got a nicely well organized sound effects library on your Mac, you can start to bring some of this into Audio Finder relatively easily. And you can combine the folders, kind of Mac folders with these native playlists they're called lists in Audio Finder. The only way they function slightly differently is when you delete stuff off a list with backspace. So on, on Audio Finder, command and backspace deletes it to your bin and simple backspace will delete it from the list. If I delete that file from the list, it's now gone. If I click away and click back to it, that file is gone from the list. Whereas in these folders, you can actually go through, say I was in this folder and I wanted to just look at these samples for now. I can delete all those ones out and then I can just work with these few samples, maybe shuffling through just the ones I've got remaining in that folder. But then if I click back and then go back into the folder, all the files are still there. So you, it's a non-destructive way of having been able to better organize folders uh, and files on your Mac. You can actually you know, I haven't touched any of the original files when you're deleting them out of a folder when you're organizing. So that kind of gives you another level where you can be more precise with the way you're organizing your files. Carrying on from this, I want to also talk about this favorites sidebar group. Now, this will always be there. This is kind of a, a default 
setting an audio finder that you can't get rid of, but it's actually very handy. You can use this favorites to store folders where you process audio in other programs. So if you're using Isotope RX or Adobe Audition or something like that to clean up samples before you're taking them into your door or wherever you're using these sound effects, you can have kind of a, a folder here of like Adobe Audition uh, bounces or something. And then I can have that in my favorites. So you can you can quickly get access to these kind of files that you're working on without having to always be clicking around in Finder to, you know, go back to that file location. And it's like it's saving you all of this kind of looking around your Mac in all the kind of different spirals and places and you're bringing it all into one place. So you're just using it as a better organizer and also giving you some kind of non-destructive ways of looking through samples and tracing your steps and shuffling and all those kind of good things. One of the reasons I really love this workflow is because you're never having to worry about corrupting your files as you're going. Whether you're using the list in Audio Finder or you're deleting in Audio Finder, shuffling through your Mac folders and organizing as you're going, you're never deleting the original files you can kind of organize without having to always worry if those files are linked to projects and if you go back you're going to have to start relocating them and all that nonsense you don't have to do any of that when you're just using these kind of sidebar lists and folders in audio finder okay so if you have a really well organized mac and all your files are kind of in the right place and you, you don't really see the point in using Audio Finder, you don't need to tag your files and they're already in the kind of places you want them. What it can be really useful for is just a way of demoing files and folders way quicker and with a few more options than you do natively on the Mac Finder. What you can do is you have these options down here. One is this Finder Selection Mode. And what Finder Selection Mode means is any file you select in Finder will be played in Audio Finder. So you can look through files and folders as you would usually, but they get demoed in Audio Finder. Now a way to kind of enhance this is to you, if you click this free button, you will then detach this window. So you can actually then get rid of this main Audio Finder window and you have this small little demo area where you can click through your samples. If you've got a MIDI keyboard, this can be really helpful because rather than having to play and pause these files with spacebar, you can actually use, uh, if you come into Audio Finder, you go Options, you go MIDI Input Device, and then you set whichever MIDI input device you want. To make this function a bit smoother, there's a couple of things I would suggest. See, if, I press, if I'm pressing spacebar, when I'm clicked on here, it will start and stop samples. When I got my finder selected, it wants to open it in normal finder. So what you can do is you can go to preferences and you can allow MIDI input in background and then you want to allow MIDI playback stops on key up. What this will mean is that if using my MIDI keyboard, I can still demo the sounds. Whilst I'm clicking through with my with up and my up and down arrows, I'm using my keyboard to demo the sounds. So you can combine using the up and down arrows with a MIDI keyboard to be triggering the samples much quicker. You can also select areas of the sample. You can select the area you want, hold control, and then drag straight out of this window into your project. So you've, you've also got option to kind of cut the samples before you take them in, meaning you don't have to do it later on and you, you can cut down some of your file sizes where you don't need that gigabyte file sitting in the, um, the project folder. You can just take in a smaller amount. A uh, tip I want to give you here is if you uh, go into Audio Finder and you take off the Show Waveform Preview, the snappiness of the program pretty much doubles. It's really snappy, much quicker than using the Finder with Spacebar and kind of demoing them this way. You can hear the flam 
how much quicker it is because the two samples are flaming against each other. It feels like you kind of want Finder to feel. And also, I noticed that Finder quite often cuts the transients right at the front of the samples, and Audio Finder doesn't do that. So you're gaining a lot with this program just using this Finder selection mode and dock to just speed up your workflow without ever having to even use the sidebar list or the tags or any of the other amazing functions in Audio Finder. Just using this is actually almost enough to, to warrant buying the program because it is super, super handy. Okay, well, thanks for listening to the first part in this sound effects audio finder tutorial the next video is going to be focused on actually getting more into using the tags and metadata and other kind of ideas for these sidebar lists and groups